One of the best reasons to drive Indiana's back roads is to get a little peace in a beautiful setting. We have big hills, deep limestone valleys, and clear, graceful streams, such as here in Crawford County. Pioneers were naturally drawn to this beautiful, peaceful area, and when they looked for a place to settle, they looked for a good source of water. Not just for drinking, preparing food, and cleaning clothes, but a strong source for water-powered mills. If you had a mill, you could turn wheat into flour for making bread. You could turn raw corn into cornmeal. Then you could make cornbread. Or you could use that mashed corn to make whiskey for both medicinal and recreational purposes. You could also convert the mill to power a saw for cutting timber for houses and other businesses. With a mill, you created civilization in the middle of a very untamed wilderness. If you built one, people would come to both buy your cornmeal, flour, and whiskey, or pay to have their own grains transformed into something they could use. Along Indiana's rivers, you'll find the ruins of many mills, such as the old Rothrock Mill beside Blue River. Hundreds of water-powered mills once existed in Indiana, but now there are only a handful. But because these mills were made in such peaceful places, people still visit them today. And so we begin a pilgrimage across Indiana to experience a more simple and graceful time. Here at Mockport, Indiana, on the far southern tip of Indiana, is Boone's Mill. It was built in 1809 by Squire Boone, the brother of famous explorer Daniel Boone. Squire was a Revolutionary War soldier, Indian fighter, explorer, justice of the peace, served in the Virginia State Legislature and was a Baptist minister. In fact, he helped build one of the first Baptist churches in Indiana. A flume transports water from a cave higher up on the hill. The cave itself is a tourist attraction, and there's also a pioneer village on the hill above. But it all started here, in the wilderness, with water and one man's ingenuity. He called it the Traveler's Rest. And I can't disagree. Heading north to Salem, Indiana, we find Beck's Mill, built by pioneer and Revolutionary War soldier George Beck. It was first built in 1808 and enlarged in 1826 when the business really took off. It was completely rebuilt in 1863 and ran 24 hours a day until 1890. Water comes from a cave up on the hill and spills into Blue River. In fact, George Beck was the person who gave Blue River its name. While no longer standing, George also built a fort here to protect against Indian attacks or outright theft of whiskey that was made here. 
This historic structure was on the verge of being lost, but was saved by a grassroots effort and the generous support of Bill and Gail Cook, whom also restored West Baden and French Lick Resorts. There used to be 60 mills in Washington County alone, but this is the last one. Perhaps the most famous mill in Indiana is the one at Spring Mill State Park at Mitchell, Indiana. No grist mill in the state has inspired more paintings and photographs. In 1818, it was built by Thomas and Cuthbert Bullitt. By 1823, the mill was sold to the Montgomery Brothers that started a distillery here. Then in 1825, Hugh Hamer bought the mill, the land, and continued the distillery business. The last owner, George Donaldson, left in 1897 and returned to Scotland. It then became a ghost town until the state refurbished the mill and village. It was open to the public in 1930 and is still a major tourist draw. Outside, you'll see the water-powered sawmill. The mill itself has three levels. The first is where you can watch grain being ground with a giant millstone. The next two levels are a museum detailing the area's pioneer history. A long flume transports water from Hammer Cave, high up on the hill. It was named after Hugh Hamer, the third owner of the mill. Without a doubt, this once ghost town is one of the best places to find some peace and Hoosier hospitality in the rolling hills of Indiana. But not all water-powered mills are out in the country or rather, the country that once surrounded them has been replaced by city. The Jasper City Mill at Jasper, Indiana was built in 1815 by Andrew Evans and quickly became an important business. Future President Abraham Lincoln and his father, Thomas Lincoln, came here in 1828 to have their corn milled. In 1865, the second mill was built on this site by the Eckert family, but was destroyed by flood in 1964. Thankfully, the mill was rebuilt in 2009 and is now a tourist attraction in the center of town. You can still get cornmeal here, but also jams, apple butters, and even wooden furniture. There are three levels to explore. If you take the bridge across the water, you can get a much better view of the water wheel. Still churning out product, the millstones are from France and are over 200 years old. Some things are worth preserving and most everyone would agree, this is one of them. 
driving northwest, you'll find the beautiful town of Bridgeton and the Bridgeton Mill. The bonus here is that a covered bridge is right next to it and crosses the waterfall. The mill was built in 1823 by Joseph Lockwood and Isaac J. Silman. It was first a sawmill, then a stone was added to mill grains. It was also a distillery. But in 1845, it burned to the ground. It was rebuilt and stands as a memorial to time itself. It's a good sized mill. The roller stone is over 2,000 pounds and over 200 years old. Each October, people flock to the Park County Cover Bridge Festival, and this place is absolutely jam-packed. But, if you visit any time outside of October, you're sure to get a beautiful view with only the sound of water in front of you. Just a few miles northeast of Bridgeton is Mansfield, Indiana, in the Mansfield Mill. It was built in 1821 by James Kelsey and Francis Dixon. In 1875, Jacob Rome, an experienced miller, bought the mill and expanded operations. He tore down the original mill in 1880 and built the huge current one, making big improvements. Also a big part of the Park County Cover Bridge Festival, it is extremely busy each October with thousands of visitors. Otherwise, it's pretty quiet here. Southeast of Indianapolis is Metamora and the Metamora Mill. A four-story cotton mill was built here in 1845 by Jonathan Baines. Over the years, it changed many hands before becoming a flour mill. Like many of these, it burned down in 1899, but was rebuilt in 1900. It burned down yet a second time in 1932, and was rebuilt to the current two-story structure that you see today. The Metamora Mill is unique in that the mill race is the beautiful Whitewater Canal. Running through the center of town, it's a scenic backdrop for an 1800s town. But the fact is, many mills didn't make it. In 1823, Keller Mill was built by Adam Keller at Brewersville. He built a great mill race and two-story mill that operated through 1937. But the Great Flood of 1937 decimated the mill. All that remains are the foundation stones of a once mighty mill. And the graceful mill race that still sends water racing downstream for hundreds of miles. Tunnel Mill at Charlestown was such a big deal in its time that the entire community came out for the opening of the Tunnel Mill Race. But the mill and tunnel are now gone. But all is not lost, and preservation efforts continue by people who believe that the past is worth remembering and worth saving. If you travel northeast of Cutler, Indiana, you'll find the Adams Mill. Completed in 1846, people have cared enough to maintain this monument to the past. And if you travel to Rowan, Indiana, you'll find the Stockdale or Rowan Mill. Completed in 1857, people plan to keep it around for a long time to come. 
all the way up in Elkhart County is Bonneville Mill, completed in 1837. It's the oldest continuously operating grist mill in Indiana. And finally, at Merrillville, is the John Wood Old Mill, completed in 1838. There are no signs of it going anywhere. There used to be hundreds of water-powered mills in Indiana. In their time, they represented civilization, bread on the table, a way to cut timber, or make strong whiskey. While many are just a memory, a few remain to remind us of a much simpler way. And perhaps we can all learn something by visiting these monuments of the past.